Hello class! Welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, our topic is all about representing real-life situations using rational functions. So bago tayo pumunta guys sa mga real-life situations, uh, reviewin muna natin ano bang ibig sabihin ng isang rational function. So by definition, a rational function r of x is a function of the form r of x is equals to p of x over q of x. Okay? So, where both p of x and q of x are polynomial. Okay? So, dito meron tayong restriction. Yung ating q of x dapat hindi equals to 0. Bakit? If ever maging 0 yung ating q of x, ibig sabihin, yung denominator ng ating uh, rational function magiging 0. Okay, it means magkakaroon tayo ng undefined. Tama? Kaya binigyan natin ng restriction yung value ng ating Q of X. So, let's have um, these two example. So, the following are examples of rational function. So, number one, meron tayong rational function which is equals to X cubed minus 1 over X plus 1. So, yung number 1 is an example of rational functions where x is not equals to 1. Okay? So, since uh, both numerator and denominator are polynomials, tapos meron tayong division or nakapraction tayo, so it means yung number 1 natin is a rational function. Tama? So, para naman tayo nagkaroon ng restriction na x is not equals to... Um, Negative 1. So, negative 1 to guys. Okay? So, bakit bawal maging negative 1 si x? Kasi, if ever na si x is negative 1, yung denominator natin magiging negative 1 plus 1. Tama? Which is equals to 0. Ngayon, kung magiging 0 yung ating denominator, yung rational function natin magiging undefined. Naintindihan? So, kaya meron tayong restriction na x is not equals to negative 1. Next, number 2. f of x is equals to 1 over x, where x is not equals to 0. So, number 2 is also an example of a rational function since the numerator and denominator are both polynomials. Okay? So, dito naman, meron tayong restriction x should not be equals to 0. Bakit? Kasi kung magiging 0 yung ating um, x, yung denominator ng ating rational function magiging 0 din. So, that means magkakaroon tayo ng undefined. Okay? So, I think naiintindihan nyo na guys kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng isang rational function. So, punta tayo ngayon dun sa kanyang uh, mga problems involving um, rational function. So, number one, the local government unit allotted a budget of 100,000 for the feeding program in the daycare center. So, the amount will be divided equally to all the pupils in the daycare cent center. Okay? So, write an equation showing the relationship of the allotted per pupil represented by f of x versus the total number of children represented by x. Okay, so dito guys, uh, may budget daw tayo galing sa local government unit na 100,000. Okay, kung saan, i-divide daw equally yung budget to all the pupils in the daycare center. So, ang pinagagawa sa atin dito, we are asked to write an equation or a function showing the relationship between the allotted amount per pupil versus the total number of children represented by x. Okay? So, first, pakita muna natin, guys, um, yung relationship in tabular form. Okay? So, try natin. Una, uh, Mag-assume muna tayo ng number of children. Ito yung ating unknown variable x. Okay? Then, magkano yung allotted amount 
or allocated amount per uh, per child okay per child to. so kung yung number of children natin is 10 sa tingin niyo guys magkano yung um, allocated amount per child so since 100,000 yung ating allotted budget so ang gagawin natin diyan is i-divide natin si 100,000 by 10 ito yung ating number of children Okay, so 100,000 divided by 10. So that means kung 10 yung ating um, pupil sa daycare center, meron silang tagte 10,000. Tama? Then kung meron naman tayong 20 pupils in our daycare center, so divide natin yung 100,000 by 20, that means meron silang tagpa 5,000. Tama guys? Then, kung meron tayong 50 uh, pupils, divide natin, 100,000 divided by 50 pupils, meron tayong 2,000 allocated amount per child. Okay, then last, kung meron naman tayong 100 na students or pupils, divide natin si 100,000 by 100, ibig sabihin, per student merong 1,000 pesos. Okay, so dito guys, um, as you notice that the number of children increase, okay, ano nangyayari dun sa ano, amount allocated per child? Bumababa. Okay, nagde-decrease. Okay, habang dumadami yung number of students or pupils or children, yung allocated amount natin is bumababa. Tama? So ngayon, paano natin i-rewrite yan? In terms of function. Ito yung pinagagawa sa atin. Okay, so since nakukuha natin yung allocated amount, by dividing the number of children doon sa ating um, allotted budget. Okay, so meron tayong fixed uh, na budget, which is 100,000. So ang function natin is dinidivide lang natin by the number of children. Okay, yun yung ating x. So ngayon, eto na guys yung ating uh, function representing the relationship ng allotted amount versus dun sa total number of children. Okay? So next, uh, may follow-up question dito no, sa 1B. So suppose a benefactor wants to supplement the budget allotted for each child by donating additional 650 pesos per child. Okay? Then, if h of x represents the new amount allotted per child, construct a function. Okay? So, pinapakonstruct tayo ng function repre uh, representing the re relationship. Okay? So, dito guys, um, may same problem tayo, no? Una, Uh, same, ang same problem natin yung number 1 Then, may additional info tayo na nakuha Na bukod dun sa makukuha nila dun, Bukod dun sa paghahatian nila sa 100,000 Is may mag pa ng 650 pesos per child Okay? So, kung gagawa tayo ng panibagong uh, table So, kukopay natin yun sa taas Number of children ito yung ating x. Tama? Then, magkano ngayon yung allocated um, amount per child? Okay? So, kung meron tayong 10 students, so kagaya nung ginawa natin kanina, paghahatian nila yung 100,000. So, kung meron tayong 10 children, 100,000 divided by 10, meron silang tagte 10,000. Tama? Then, dito sa may 1B natin, may another um, benefactor wants to supplement the budget. Ang sabi dito, may additional 650 pesos per child. So, ibig sabihin, bukod dun sa 10,000 guys, mag a tayo ng 650. Tama? So, ito na yung, ito na yung ating allotted amount per child 10,000 plus 
Okay? Then, kung meron naman tayong 20 students, ibig sabihin, meron silang tag for 5,000 na galing doon sa ating 100,000 plus meron din tayong 650. Okay? Then, kung 50 naman, meron tayong tag to 2,000 per child galing doon sa 100,000. Then, meron tayong additional na 650. Okay? Then, kung meron tayong 100 children, meron silang 1,000 galing dun sa 100,000 na galing dun sa ating uh, government unit plus another 650 pesos. Okay, so ngayon, paayan natin uh, i-represent yung ating rational function. Okay? So, dito, yung ating h of x is now equals saan? Una, paano ba natin nakuha yung 10,000, 5,000, 2,000, and 1,000 dito sa ating table? So, dinivide natin si 100,000 by the number of children. Tama? Then, after natin ma-divide si 100,000 by x, yung number of children, meron tayong dinadagdag na 650 pesos. Okay? So, ito na ngayon guys, yung ating function representing the relationship between the uh, allocated amount per child doon sa ating number of children. Nakuha guys? So, let's proceed to example number 3. A car is to travel a distance of 70 kilometers. Then we are asked to express the velocity as a function of travel time t in hours. Okay, so first, construct muna natin yung ating table. Showing the relationship between dun sa uh, distance traveled and dun sa velocity. Okay, so syempre, para makompute natin si velocity, Gagamit tayo ng time. So, ito ngayon guys, yung ating um, t in hours. Okay, ang variable na ginamit natin is t. Naka in hours tayo dyan. Okay? Then, using time, makukompute natin si velocity. Tama? So, si velocity natin is in kilometer per hour. Okay? So, ang given natin is yung 70 kilometers. So, try natin. If ever nag-travel yung car natin in 1 hour, okay? Ibig sabihin, yung kanyang velocity is, i-divide lang natin yan, 70 kilometers divided by 1 hour. So, that is 70 kilometer per hour. Tama? Ito yung ating velocity. So, kung nag-travel naman ng 2 hours yung ating car, ibig sabihin, ang velocity ng ating car is 70 divided by 2, that is 35 kilometers per hour. Tama? Then, kung nag-travel naman siya ng 5 hours, divide natin, 70 divided by 5, so ang kanyang velocity is 14 kilometers per hour. Okay? Then, kung nag-travel naman tayo ng 10 hours, so 70 divided by 10, ang velocity ng kotse is 7 hours. Okay, so as you can see guys, habang tumataas yung ating time, yung velocity natin is bumababa. Tama? So ngayon, paano natin marerepresent yung function ng ating velocity? Okay, in, ter in terms of time. So, dito, nakocompute natin si velocity by dividing the 70 kilometers sa natin dinidivide doon sa ating time. Tama? So, ito na ngayon yung ating uh, function that can represent V as a function of T. Okay? So, yung, ito yung ating final answer. Nakuha guys? So, this is the end of our video. I hope uh, naiintindihan nyo guys kung paano mag-represent ng function. 
So if you have questions or clarifications, kindly put them in the comment section below. So thank you guys for watching. This is Prof. D. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!